So our initial part of the demonstration for how to use the um, Magritech Benchtop NMR is how to load a sample. Now most of you probably already know how to do this, but just in case, we have a loaded NMR tube. Make sure that you have at least half a milliliter of um, liquid in here in order to hit the fill line. We have the um, tube holder here, and we draw the tube all the way down until we feel the resistance of the cap. At that point, we bring the tube into the spacer, and we push down, like so. And now the NMR tube is the right length to um, drop down into the region where the sampling will be done. I generally also like to do just a quick um, cleaning with a Kim wipe. And now we're going to place this into one of the sample slots. So I'm going to place this into slot number 17. So this is 17 here. You can also read the 17 on the top here if you're not sure of the position. All right, after that, we have to get into the software. And the uh, password for this is Organic Chem, where the O of organic is a zero. And the C is uppercase. So O, R, G, A, N, I, C, uppercase C, H, E, M. All right, so we're now into the Magritech software. Now, if we need to get into the Magritech software, we can always go down to this bullseye down here and hit that, and that takes us directly into the software, okay? So this is a prior spectrum that was scanned, and what we want to do is to make sure that we are in the Q part. All right, so once we're in the Q, we can click here for the queued measurements. So these are the measurements that are queued and ready to go. Now at this point we only have um, one thing in the queued measurement and this would be normal and that's going to be the reference um, tube which just contains water. So we're locking to the NMR signal of water. And it's very important that um, slot number 20 with the water is always inserted into the instrument. You can see right now that the um, slot number 20 is actually the one that's inserted into the instrument there. So we always want to begin that way, we also want to end that way. Okay, so now what we want to do is um, load our sample into the software. So we placed our um, tube into position 17, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on position 17 on the auto sampler. Now it previously had another sample into it, so you can notice that the sample name is here, the solvent is water, and I want to remove that sample from slot 17 so I can put a new sample in there. Now you can notice that the color here has changed from green to this sort of whitish tan. So I'm going to click on 17 here, and I'm going to institute it as a new sample. So I'm going to call this, give this one another name. This is Lizzie Brew. And we're always going to be referencing to water as the solvent. Okay, so once we have this, we can add the sample to slot 17. So hit the Add Sample to Slot 17 button. And now you see another menu come up. Okay, so what we want to do here is two things, and we can set it up in the same menu. We want to first shim the sample, okay? So this means we're going to optimize the magnetic field around the sample in order to take the measurements. So we're going to click on shim sample, and I like to do a quick shim first and second order, so that's what I'm going to highlight there. If it's not highlighted, go ahead and highlight that. You could also do a quick shim first order if you want. This one's a little bit better. So that's what we're going to go with. The next thing that we want to do is set up the um, instrument to acquire the actual spectrum. So what we want to do here is water suppression. So we want to suppress the water peak in the NMR so we can see the other peaks. So we're going to hit the wet suppression button here, and that suppresses the water signal. Okay, and notice that a menu comes up over here. Now, make sure that our correction factor is 0.9. That works best for kombucha samples. We're going to stick with two dummy scans and we're going to do 32 scans of our sample. The other important thing to keep in mind is we want our carbon-13 decouplings to both be on, so if they're off, make sure those are on. Okay, so once all that's done, I'm going to append to the queue, so that means I'm going to place my sample into the queue. Okay, and you'll notice that it's here. And then if this is the only sample I want to run, the last thing I want to do is to put the reference back in. So I'm going to go back to 20, click on that, and I'm going to send the system to standby, and then I'm going to append to the queue to add it there. So now you'll see I have the reference in, Lizzie Brew is next, so we're going to shim that and run the um, 
wet suppression analysis. And then finally, we're gonna pull that one out and replace it with the reference. So that's always the way we want this to look. Now, when we're ready to start, we're just gonna click on the reference up here and we're gonna ask it to stop. And what you're gonna see happen over here is that the reference tube will actually come out and our new sample, the Lizzie Brew, will come in. So you'll see the auto sampler doing what it's supposed to do. So remember Lizzie Brew is in slot 17. So 20 will come out. The auto sampler will take us over to 17 and insert the sample. You'll see that happen momentarily. All right, there it goes. And then what you're gonna notice is that the analysis after a couple of minutes will begin. And the analysis will take a few minutes. It'll probably take about 20 minutes for the analysis to occur. So uh, before we come back and look at our spectrum, we're just gonna walk away from the instrument for a while and let things happen. So at this point, you can go off and get a coffee. Okay, so um, some time has passed and now we actually have a completed spectrum of our kombucha here. So here's the spectrum that we see. Now we can't actually analyze the spectrum um, in the um, MNOVA software. So we have to go, to, or in the, um, in the um, what do you call this thing? SpinSol software. So we have to go to MNOVA software, which is this little icon down here. So we're gonna hit that. And then you're gonna see it activates down here. So this little uh, brown symbol, we're gonna hit that. And that brings us into the um, actual software for analysis. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get rid of, delete this um, stuff on the side, we don't need it. I'm just gonna expand the spectrum outwards a little bit like so. And now the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to expand the spectrum so we can look at the um, part of it that we really care about. All right, so what I'm gonna do is expand from about seven, parts per million out to about zero parts per million. And this is basically everything we're going to need. And this is the region of the water suppression right here. So here's the original water peak, which would normally be absolutely massive. So in this case, we've made it quite small so we can actually see the other things around it that we want to see. So as far as peak assignments go, this is our primary standard, which is the maleic acid, uh, just under 6.5 ppms here. And in this kombucha, I see a doublet here, um, a little bit shy of 5.5, that's going to be the sucrose. Here's another doublet, that's alpha glucose, which is one isomer or form of glucose. Over here on the side of the water peak, this little doublet that we see here is beta glucose. Okay, so that's another form of glucose that we're going to look at. Fructose, if we have it, is typically in this region right here. Okay, so what we can do is we could um, integrate this area right here. This looks more or less like a standard fructose region right here, so we could integrate that. If we move off to about two parts per million, that's acetic acid right there, which is another important component that adds to the acidity of the kombucha. And this triplet over here is the alcohol. Okay, so ultimately what we wanna be able to do is um, determine the areas under these peaks so we can ultimately um, get quantitative data out. So to do that, we go up to the analysis part, we click on that, and then we click on this peak right here, which is for a manual integration with a little um, green ball on it. So hit that. And then we have um, this guy down here, which has linear correction. This is important, we're gonna use this. So to integrate, all we need to do is basically take our cursor and see the integral sign under there. And what I may actually do is make this a little bigger so we can see the peaks a little better. Because I'm going to come in, for example, and get the maleic acid peak. So I'm going to start somewhere just a little bit before the peak and go a little bit after it, baseline to baseline. And um, what we'll have here is an absolute integral of 37.83. But if I do a baseline correction by hitting the auto detect down here, notice that this decreases the integral a little bit. So this is the number that I want. Okay, so about 37 um, units here are what I have for my um, internal standard. Now, for sucrose, we'll just do a sucrose so we can um, get an idea of how to do another peak, and they all work pretty much the same way. 
So this is my sucrose peak, so I'm going to start a little before it, go to just past it. Now notice the baseline is not perfectly um, straight going from here to here. There's a little bit of slopiness moving here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit, notice that my absolute is about 14.86. I'm going to hit auto detect for linear correction, and that drops down to 13.78. Okay, so that's the value we would take. We could do the same thing for the alpha glucose. Okay, 5.13, hit the auto detect, and we'd be at 4.19. Now for the beta glucose, the better way to do this, since we have two peaks here, and they're on a very slopey baseline because of the water peak that it, we're next to, so I'm gonna look at them individually. So my first uh, peak for beta glucose, 6.29, I'll do the linear correction, so I'd write down 2.07 for that one, and then I'll come back and get the second one. And again, peak to peak, that's going to be 5.26, and that goes to 3.39. So what I would do is I would add those two up to get the total value for the beta glucose. Then the next peak that I care about is fructose. That's usually this peak right around in here. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Notice the baseline here is crazy. So that gives me like 15.71. Now with auto detect, it drops all the way down to 0.73. So we're accounting for just the peak here, not all this other stuff that's on top of it. Then we can get the um, peak for the um, acid. This is the acetic acid, 18.08, goes to 17.35, and then finally we'll get the ethanol. So we'll start here at the baseline, get the whole triplet, baseline to baseline, and we will now auto detect, and we have 19.88. So once I have these integrated areas, then we can apply the math that we need to to determine exactly what concentration each one of those components has in our kombucha.